a turbocharger uses the energy contained in the exhaust gases to compress the intake air required for combustion. Compressing the air to above atmospheric pressure improves the filling of the cylinders and allows more fuel to be injected, which in turn increases the engine's output of both torque and power. The turbocharger consists of a turbine and impeller mounted on a common shaft. The exhaust gases drive the turbine and the impeller compresses the combustion air. The faster the turbine spins, the more the air is compressed or boosted. In turn, the more the air is boosted, the greater the volume and flow of the exhaust gases and so on as the cycle is repeated. The engine can withstand only a certain amount of boosting, so a control valve, known as the wastegate, is fitted. It's made up of a spring-loaded valve and diaphragm assembly connected to the inlet manifold by a short hose. The boost pressure acts upon the diaphragm and, at a predetermined pressure, it overcomes the spring pressure and opens the wastegate. The exhaust gases can then bypass the turbine unused. The turbine subsequently slows down and the boost pressure is reduced. The reduction in pressure causes the wastegate to close and the whole cycle begins again. On some models you'll find an additional dump valve. It's a fail-safe device which opens at a pressure higher than that of the wastegate. In the unlikely event of the wastegate failing to open, it dumps the excessive boost pressure to atmosphere, so protecting the engine from possible damage. We already mentioned that to increase the engine's output, extra fuel must be provided to mix with the additional volume of air supplied by the turbocharger. The injection pumps of turbo models have a boost pressure control device. Internally, a diaphragm supported by a spring is connected via an additional linkage to the control sleeve of the high-pressure plunger. Externally, a hose joins the unit to the inlet manifold. Under idling or part load, no additional fuel is necessary and the injection pump functions as normal. But under heavy load, the boosted inlet air forces the diaphragm down and via the linkage, the control sleeve is moved to the right. Thus, more fuel is delivered to the injectors and the engine's output is increased. When the load decreases, the turbo slows down, the boost pressure reduces, and the diaphragm and control sleeve return to their normal positions. Intercooling. Intercooling offers a further increase in the power output for the turbocharged diesel engine. As the turbocharger compresses and accelerates the air flowing into the engine, it also becomes hot. Under extreme full load conditions, the air leaving the turbocharger can reach 110 degrees C before it enters the engine. By fitting an intercooler into the duct between the turbo and inlet manifold, the boosted air temperature can be lowered by as much as 50 degrees C. With the cooler air, more oxygen finds its way into the cylinders. This leads to an increased cylinder charge and thus improved power output. Cooling the air also has the advantage of reducing combustion temperatures and in turn the exhaust's NOx emissions. In construction, the intercooler is similar to a radiator. Instead of water passing through the core though, it's the boosted air. The air is then cooled by the vehicle's normal airflow passing over the fins.